welcome back to JJ's Bake House. So today we're going to be making some heart Valentine's cupcakes. Now I've seen these before and I really really liked them so I thought I would show you how they're done. So we're going to begin with making the hearts for the centre of these. So we are going to start with our butter as always. So I've got unsalted butter and that's 75 grams that doesn't want to come out of softened unsalted butter going in there along with 75 grams of caster sugar so pop those in make sure the bowl's on which it wasn't and mix those until they are really light and fluffy because that's where you're going to be getting your air into your sponge so i'm going to turn this up mix it around until it's paler and fluffy and i'll be straight back to you Right, okay, that has kind of done what I've wanted. I say that because I don't know about you, but it's colder weather at the moment um, and I am having a lot of trouble with my butter because it's a room temperature butter, but room temperature butter for me uh, is like putting it in the fridge. So a couple of things, you can pop it in the microwave, but you don't want it to break apart and change its consistency too much or another hack you can do if you've got a metal bowl when you're preheating your oven for the cupcakes just pop your bowl in be really careful when you take it out but it'll keep because when the butter goes round and it hits the cold of the bowl on the outside it goes colder and it sticks to the outside so a really good thing is to slightly heat and I don't mean make it really hot just pop it into the oven for about two minutes take it out and then mix up that butter it's really good for buttercream at the moment this is as well and um, you'll get that desired effect a lot better so just a little hack for you there so now anyway back to this so I've got 75 grams of both of those in there then I am going to put in my egg now to get 75 grams of egg it's quite difficult because even though on recipes they tell you two eggs three eggs four eggs it's all really those with us the basic sponge cake they're all the same um what's the word i'm looking for they're all the same measurements so 75 grams of egg was tough i put two in and it gave me 100 i put one in and it gave me 50. so what i did is i scrambled them beat them up to make them all mixed like this and then i just tipped a little bit out put it back on the scales and it gave me 77 anything in and around 75 is fine i'm going to be better with 77 than what i am with 120. so i do have 75 grams of egg gone into there and then I'm also going to add my 75 grams of plain flour and half a teaspoon of baking powder. Now we're just going to mix those up. On the lowest speed as always because you don't want to beat lots and lots and lots out of this. Okay, now when it's just started to combine, pop in your milk. Now I've got one tablespoon of milk and I've got half a teaspoon of vanilla. So I'm just going to pop that in as well and let that do its thing lovely that's looking perfect now we need to add some of the red food coloring because i want my heart to be red so i've got still a little bit of milk left in the bottom of there so if i just mix it up with the little bit that's left on the bottom there it's just going to make that easier to pop in now you could have just added it completely to the milk that you put in and mixed it up but i find a smaller amount can sometimes make it a little bit easier so there we go as you can see there that's mixed nicely you want a good dollop of red because we we want this to it's valentine's day it's all about the red okie doke right now uh put this bit in here yeah and we want to get that in and all of it so i should have got my smaller one but in case you don't have a smaller one we'll just go with the larger one there we are there it's out there we go right now we're going to give that a final mix up I'm not covered yet not for long just try and leave all this you can see i covered in red I get. Excellent. That's brilliant. 
don't want to mix it around any more than that. So I've got myself a tin here um, and I've gone for a thin enough tin on this one. Uh, you could go for a thicker tin and then cut it in half but you don't want these hearts to be too big. So you need a heart cutter for the middle. I've got this one. It's quite wide um, but when you take it through to the bottom you'll have that bottom part that you don't want anyway so you're going to cut some of that off so that's a roundabout with my little bit cut off i'm quite happy with that but as i said if you've only got a larger one then just use a larger one right let's get this back let's make sure all this has come off Just make sure that it's completely combined. As I usually say, I'm using a creaming paddle, so I don't need to stop and keep uh, scraping the sides down because it does it for me. If you do have, do, don't have one of those, then you will need to stop and keep scraping down. Right, I'm happy. So we're just gonna pop this in. Lovely, lovely color. And then if you've got a palette knife, you can scrape it, you can move it around a little bit better. Now this one, because I've gone so thin with my cake here, this is an eight inch, but if you were doing a thicker one, then just go with a six inch. And that's what this recipe will give you. So I've preheated my oven there to my preferred temperature which is 150 degrees on a fan assisted oven if you haven't got a fan assisted oven go for 160 and we'll put this in for around about 25 minutes to half an hour but the lower um temperature it really does need that little bit longer so there we go trying to make sure because mine's quite thin that it is working its round way round in an even fashion there so i'm going to pop this into the oven and i will be straight back to you when it has come back out again okay my cake has come out of the oven it actually only took 20 minutes because mine's really thin isn't it so depends on the thickness of your cake as to how long so that's good isn't it why doesn't it want to know here we go lovely Look at the colour on that. Really, really good. Just what we want. There we are. Right, so I've got my little heart and I am just going to push through and make lots of these little hearts. Now I haven't gone too small with my cutter. It's it's a good old size, what would it be? Half an inch ish, just over three quarters. If you do it too small, when you put the batter on the top of this, it's going to crush it. So you don't want it to be too small. Right then. So just in case there's some there that you don't want, just keep going and use up as much of the cake as you can. So there we are. That's mine. I'm happy enough. Let me remove this. This, don't bin this, because what you can do is put this down now into a bowl and we can, in fact, actually, hang on, I have a bowl. Right. Take it away from the corner bits that were a bit too thin. So we'll pop all this in here and we'll make some decoration for the top of our cake using this. I love using cake for decoration. So for the top of our cupcakes, we'll just put that in and we will use our fingers to like breadcrumbs later and we can use that up and then there's no waste. So what you're gonna do with these, look at that. That's absolutely lovely. That's just the way you want them. So try and get the ones that are the most uniform. Some of mine are, there we go, that's fine. A little bit off 
there we go I'm actually not going to cut them or anything that one's a bit useless we'll put that in with that but I do like these look at the color it's so nice now when you're going through if you don't think that the heart has got enough then you can just exaggerate that a little bit if you wanted to so just by cutting through there you go and then that will exaggerate that a little bit more so it's depending on what your cutters like some cutters are excellent at this and other cutters just don't really seem to have that indentation so there we go if you just put your knife down through the middle and then push it either or side it just opens it up just a little bit more so we don't need to do anything else with these now once you're happy with the shape of them and once you've made sure that you've got that proper mark across the top then what we're going to do now is we're going to go on and make the actual cupcakes that these are going to sit inside of so let me finish making my little marks in the top and I will be straight back to you and we will make the cupcakes see you in a sec started. now I've just done my little trick I just put my bowl into the uh, oven as I said earlier now look I've got my hands on it you don't want to really really hit hot but it's just enough that if your butter isn't quite soft enough it's just gonna help with the freezing coldness of the bowl so if it's lovely weather and it's warm enough and it's not really cold and everything at room temperature is lovely don't worry about doing it but otherwise just slightly warm that so i've got 150 grams of um softened butter going in there unsalted and 150 of sugar caster sugar usual thing whip those two together make them really really light and fluffy and then we will add all the rest of the ingredients my usual way to do cupcakes so medium speed that's combining lovely now because the sides of the bowl are freezing cold lovely i'm gonna come back to you because it's really noisy right i'll show you what mine looks like there you go it's all like mousse like and soft and it's gone really pale and that's the air that we want for our cupcakes so the rest now can just go in i've got three eggs in that goes and then i've also got 150 grams of plain flour and one teaspoon of baking powder so let's just tidy that let's put a tea towel over in case that flies everywhere slowest speed that you can let that do its thing there now in here i have got two teaspoons no i'm lying i've got two tablespoons of milk and one teaspoon of vanilla so as soon as that starts to combine that goes straight in so simple don't let this go round too much we so grab my muffin tin and my trusty spoons that's done there we go Scrape all this down. Now normally I use 175 grams of everything for cupcakes, but the reason that I've done 150 is because we've got these, so we're not using the full amount. So we don't want to waste. Right, that's what my batter looks like. All combined, lovely, not curdled and lots of air so to begin with what we're going to do is take a spoon and put about half a tablespoon into the bottom of each one right i'm just going to do three to show you because i can do the rest of this in a minute you want to get a good coverage on the bottom so right take that out i can show you there we go 
So, there we are. Now, what we're going to do is take one of these hearts. Now, I know that you're going to say that I'm going to put something cooked into, but the batter seems to protect it and it doesn't dry out. So, clever. Don't know why it happens, but it does. So, we're going to put this in. Now, this is really important. If you want to be able to cut these cupcakes and wow people and say, oh, look, I've got my heart in the middle, you need to know which way your heart's facing. Because if you cut through this, this way, it's not going to look like heart, it's going to look like blob. So the best thing to do is work towards one area and make sure that everything goes this way. So all my hearts are gonna face this way. So I'm gonna put it in, don't push it down too much, just and open that top bit up so it kind of fans out. So look, this is mine, can you see? There we go, that's mine. And then take the other half, and pop that over the top and just cover it over and lock the seal on it down okay right let's do another one here we go pop it in don't push it down too far because if you push it down too far when you cut through the cake it's going to have sank so pull that apart a little bit and this on the top and create that seal there we go oh my god I'm adding more before I'm adding these so a bit of a lengthy process but it's worth it it's fun don't forget keep all those hearts going in the completely same direction really really important otherwise you're not going to know which way to slice them. Right, and then you get the gist, and it takes ages. So I'm going to carry on and come back to you when I'm finished. So, Okay then, I'm all done. I have actually only got ten, so I'm going to take those two out of there. Anyway, these are now going to go into the oven for around about 20 minutes. And that's on my usual 150 for a fan assisted or 160 for a conventional oven. So let's pop these in and have a look when they come back out. So I'll see you in a moment. Right, while they're in the microwave, I have found my heart mould and I want to put hearts on the top of my cupcakes just to finish off that theme of it being um, Valentine's Day. And also, we've put the cupcakes in and we've put those hearts all facing towards one way which is great you know exactly where they are so long as they're in the muffin tray but the minute you take them out you're going to be lost so you need to put something on the top of these cakes that is going to give you that same symbol so I'm going to put hearts in and I'm just gonna do chocolate molds and then I will pop in a heart going in that direction so that you know every time you give somebody the cake if you want to cut it open that heart has to be facing that way, that it's uniform. The heart on the top is the same as the heart hidden underneath. So you can do this with chocolate, or you can get those really nice heart jellies that you could use the same way. You know, the red sweet jellies that you could put in. You could put anything, so long as it is directing you which way it's going. So I've got 100 grams of milk chocolate chips and I'm going to go and warm those in the microwave just to um, melt them so I can pop them into my mould. So I'll be back to you in a moment. Right, my chocolate is melted so leave that to one side. Right, and then I'm, I've got some gold glitter, oh what's it called? Sparkle gold from Sugar Flare. So, and I've got a brush. I am just going to brush some gold into my moulds because the chocolate will pick up on that. And it's just on the top, going to give it something a little bit different. So look, that's what that looks like. Right, let's take some of this, pour it into the mould. Another one, pour it into the mould. Right. While I fill all these up, I will come back to you because this is really boring for you to watch. So I'll be back in a sec. 
Right, I'm Phil. It's just a bit of bang and a bit scraper. Well, reaching bent scraper. And there, just across the top. Right then. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop these into the freezer. Yeah, I'm going to pop these into the freezer so that I know that they're done for when I need them. Excellent. There we go. There's our pots. Right then. So for the top of this, um, I'm just going to use regular buttercream. So here's my buttercream. You can find the method and the recipe for this buttercream on my channel. It's just my simple, easy, regular white buttercream. So it's a really, really easy tutorial there and this is a lovely buttercream as well not grainy and a lovely consistency so there we are right what i'm going to do is i'm going to have that mixture effect with the buttercream for this so i'm going to take half of my buttercream into a tub and there we go there we are and then I'm going to dye this with the red. So um, the same red as what I used for the inside of that heart. So I'm keeping the theme of this going all the way through. So I'm just going to get my red because I didn't and I'll be straight back to you. Then so I've got my sugar flare red extra and I'm just gonna put a good dollop of that in here. So probably, well I've got half a teaspoon I'd say, but depends on what colour you're using, you just need to use it until you get the desired colour that you want. So we're just going to give this a mix up. And this one is a really deep red. Brilliant. So now we've got our red and we've got the white just there as well. So if you want to get yourself a nozzle and a piping bag. So for this one I am going to use a Wilton 1M because I really like that as just a standard um, effect on the top. That's my kind of go-to. So I'll be using the Wilton 1M. So I need some cling film for this and a piping bag and a nozzle. So I'll be straight back when I've, we've got all those things. Right, so I've got my nozzle, my piping bag, cling film, and buttercream. So, roll yourself out a piece of cling film. Oops, not that big. And then just cut so that you're ready and prepared. Right. I'm beginning again. Oh, I'm going to begin with the white. So we've got our white here. I'm just going to pop it on the cling film like a sausage. There we go. Trying to make sure that all the way down it's roughly the same kind of thickness. And then I'm going to go in with the white the white the red the same thing again put that down next to it try and make them around about the same thickness there we go brilliant right and take cling film And roll it over, keep the edges out to the sides. Just let spin mine around there because it's easier for me to do. Okay, and then you've got this here, so pull it back towards you. Put your hand there, and can you see what I'm doing? There you go. Pull it back towards you like that, and across the top, and then just roll it. 
There we go. And the tighter you roll it, you're really forcing it in together, which is what you need. So there we are. And there is my sausage. So now I've got my pipe in bag. I'm just gonna put that nozzle into the bottom cut off this but not far down here what you don't want is the cling film coming through that nozzle if the cling film comes through the nozzle you're not going to get the effect and it's just going to get caught and trapped so kind of push this back up a little bit there we go and then cut quite a wide amount so if you can see there, I've got my section that I've cut is around about that big. Pick it up gently. And then just push it in. And there we go. This is a little bit big, so I'm just gonna cut some of this off because it just makes it easier to work with. There we are. And I've got red dye on there, so move that. Okay, and then, just tip it up like that. Can you see that gap that I've got just there? So this way you know that none of that cling film is anywhere near this. So push it down. There's our cakes. So push it down, turn it, and we're just gonna leave that on the side until these cakes have cooled. So let me go and have a look at these cakes. I'll straight back to you. Right, so these are done. They've just come out of the oven there. So there we are, lovely and soft. So I'm just going to pop them up here. Don't forget, you know your hearts are going that way. So it's just time to let them cool now. So you can go and grab a cup of tea, do whatever it is you would like to do while we wait for those to cool and then we can decorate them down. So as soon as they're ready, we will be back. See you in a moment. Right then, so these have come out of the oven um, and they took about 22 minutes. I've left them to cool. So don't forget the way that they were, we're going to cut into one of these now uh, before I decorate them. So um, don't forget, this way facing this way. So this is why they, I've left them in the tin. So let's open this up. Right, take my knife, cut down through the middle there. there we go we have our heart across the top there so we know it works and we're just going to decorate the top of these now so to finish them off nicely so I'm going to decorate them again in here so that I really don't lose what I'm doing at all so right okay so there we are lovely it's warmed okay so as my usual down and around and lift And then I have taken out my hearts out of the freezer and I just gave them a tap on the back and they popped out. So the red ones, they're okay. They've got something on them. They're not as good as the gold. Whoops, don't throw them. So I'm gonna take one of those and pop it in the top in the direction that that heart is going. So, Pop them in. Okay, and then we're able to take these out then because you know exactly where you are, you know exactly what you're doing. So you can either just leave them like that, or earlier, don't forget, we had some of this left over. So if you just rub it through your fingers like this, there we 
go. And it makes it lovely breadcrumby bits. And then you can take some of this and just drop it over the top of your cakes. Which just finishes it off absolutely lovely. And that is our Valentine's Heart Surprise Cupcakes. There we go. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you really enjoy your little surprises inside of your cupcakes and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.